Hey troopers, we're back to work here at the ITM shop. Doing a little work to figure out the mystery machine here. <clears throat> um, just a couple of uh, corrections uh, from the last video. Uh, I watched the video and, and saw that I had made a mistake. Uh, when I first uh, responded to the advertisement for the mystery trooper, it was advertised as a 1986. And I believe that it's uh, at, at the latest an 87 because of the square headlights. And I'm, I'm starting to figure out the picture a little bit here. Um, I'm about to pull off the main option code plate from under the hood. And I can tell, let's bend that out of the way. Oh yeah, that hinge could be fixed. I am starting to believe that this was somebody's jimmy rig. Um, these are pop rivets. They are not the plastic rivets that come from the factory. So somebody has either pulled this plate off and put it back on. Somebody may have had an accident and ruined the original rivets. Or this is not the original plate from this truck. And somebody's done some switcherooing, which is definitely illegal according to the Motor Vehicle Act. Oh, look what I've done to my wiper motor. Son of a bitch, we were too hard on the wiper motor bringing the... Okay, well, we got some spare parts there. Anyways, um, the other thing that I get to with this truck is that uh, we take a look at the very furry steering wheel that I had a little freak out about in the last video. Oh, that's not good. Huh. Touching the Beamer logo. Not cool. Alright, we'll just be gentle here. Um, so, wow, I don't even want to stick my head in there. Uh, I can feel the funk. I can smell the funk. It's funk. Lots of funk. Can you see the funk? How about now? And this is as close as you can get to the funk without it touching your eyeballs. Anyways, this is a Passport Motor Company or a Passport Motor Division logo. I don't know if you can see that. It looks like a P and it's got kind of a globe in the center. Um, as far as I know, and of course I could be corrected on this by somebody who's a little bit more of an expert on it, the Passport Motor Division was a creation of the General Motors company in combination with Azuzu in order to get around some pretty funky Canadian import laws and so the Passport Motor Company was importing the Azuzus into Canada and so as a result we got a variety of troopers that had the Passport logo on the steering wheel so in my mind with that information in consideration this is absolutely a Canadian trooper body and frame. Now, if I get down here, I also get some confirmation from that. This is a Canadian import sticker. And um, this truck wouldn't have it if it weren't a Canadian import. Consequently, the Canadian motor vehicle importation sticker with all the stats and the serial number and the year of production, the GVWR, that is missing and I don't think that's accidental uh, considering that I have some pop rivets holding the other plate under the hood I believe that somebody has done a switcheroo on this vehicle uh, to get around registering this body and frame so I have developed a little bit of a hypothesis and that is that the diesel engine transmission and transfer case were in another trooper that trooper may have been registered and insured in Canada and somebody has swapped over the engine and the transmission along with the engine plate and then later on somebody may have come to that person and said well what about the VIN on the dash can't the police see the VIN on the dash and tell that they don't match and so that person came under the hood and sprayed everything. And as you can see from here, this black spray is only on the firewall. It doesn't come forward past here on the fender, doesn't touch the battery box, doesn't touch any part of the front clip. And then over on this side here, he sprays the back wall, he gets up to the fender and he says, hey, that's enough, I've done enough. Well, 
Why wouldn't you want to spray the front clip? If you're doing any kind of painting or anti-corrosion work on this truck, the front clip really needs it down in here. And underneath the battery box is where you see a lot of rod on these trucks. So, that's the hypothesis. I'm running with it until I can find some more evidence. But uh, the other confirmation that we have for VINs is this option sticker in the glove box, which, to be honest with you, I really don't come across very often. Um, they're usually either not there or it's been since removed. So, I can take a look at here. Uh, JACC, this is definitely a Japanese model, not a Taiwanese model. And what a list of options. Here, right away, I see G80. That means this puppy's got a limited slip differential. I have scored. And the rest of these codes, there are a lot of them. I'm going to have to go into the codex, which has 1,100 codes. And surprisingly, I still come across codes that it does not cover, even with 1,100 codes in there. If you don't have the codex and you'd like it to identify the equipment on your trooper, you can either send me an email with a picture of your, of your uh, under the hood option code plate like the one we were just looking at with the pop rivets or you can go on to planet Azuzu planetazuzu.com is a good place for you to go if you've never been there and you're an Azuzu owner and you can get the codex off of that website or from one of the users in the meantime C60 A31 there's a lot of codes on this list that I don't commonly see MX0, NA5, those are pretty unfamiliar to me. LL Tool, uh, LL2, I'm pretty sure that's the option code for the V6. And RMN, yeah, I'm going to have to take a look at my code and find out what's going on there because, um, of course, 1,100 codes, I don't memorize them all. And a few of them are really stupid. I mean, there's, you know, there's a separate code for your polyurethane steering wheel as opposed to your super funky furry leather option. It's not even a steering wheel cover on there. I thought it was, but it's actually just the leather steering wheel. And, uh, yeah, that tells me a lot about the hands of the person who used to drive this vehicle. They must have been pretty dirty quite often. Oh, wow, we got some wire hacking down here. I don't know if I'm going to get anything out of the wiring clip on this truck. But, anyways, um, that's about it for the mystery machine. I am going to take this plate off under the hood, and I'm going to have a look to, uh, to see if I can identify what my serial number is and what some of the options are. I'll take the serial number off of this, I'll cross-reference it to the serial number in the glove box, cross-referencing that with the VIN on the actual dash, excuse me. So, um, somebody else has transferred a bunch of equipment under here to go with the diesel, including this relay pack and this air box. And uh, there was a, there's a fuel pump, it's absolutely. What I don't know is whether there's the original gasser uh, fuel pump uh, in the tank. So uh, as I pull apart things, I'll get to discover more. But in the meantime, I'm very stoked to have an LS body with the temper light copper windows, the limited slip rear diff. Um, this is the fancy 11-piece bumper set and uh, it's kind of fuckered so we're not going to worry about that too much but I do have a little hidden hitch down here which looks like it might be restorable the fuel cell skid plate is missing never came with the truck at all but that may also be uh, like that that fuel cell is going to be salvageable uh, the diesel fuel that came out of it was very clean. Unfortunately, we didn't know that it was full of diesel, and we spilled a whole bunch on the uh, the deck of the flatbed while we were in transit. The other thing that's kind of interesting under here is this muffler. It's pretty heavy duty. Holy crap. That doesn't even make a soft tin sound as I hit it. You know, if we were going to smack a walker, it would have pretty sh thin sheet metal on the outside. Yeah, a walker or any kind of other, uh, you know, even a MagnaFlow, they're going to have a pretty soft tin sound. That sounds like solid piping. 
this uh, welding on the back cap in here, the back cap and the front cap, they look hand welded. I believe this is a hand built muffler and I believe it's built to last. It's absolutely the most solid muffler I've ever seen on a trooper. Most of them uh, are pretty thin and disposable. This one looks like it is built to last. Uh, we've got the two-piece drive shaft going on here with the carrier bearing and of course you can see where the frame rail is cut. So this body with the cancer that I've got, I mean I was talking about a dent under the hood earlier. I didn't see some of this stuff. You know, to be honest with you, when I first purchased it, uh, I didn't really look at cancer issues or the health of the body much, knowing that A, the frame had been cut, and B, I was really out to purchase the 4FB1 and the transmission and transfer case. This body is screwed. Uh, somebody could do body work on this, but these are the rockers, and they're just rotten as fuck. So... I expect to find a lot of other rod in here. I mean, the fenders, the, the, the full lip and corners still appear to be here, but um, back in here, there's some pretty good cancer going on there. So I'm just going to write off this body. I might use it as a little bit of a storage shed for a while before we actually kill it, um, which means that I'll leave the windows and the doors on for now just to store parts. Um, and then later on when I get into the... Uh, the white trooper frame off resto in the back here that guy right there that is going to be a frame off resto and that is what all the juice is about i'm i'm you know if nobody if no clients decide to purchase my three inch cal mini lift kit it's going on that truck that truck's getting a three inch cal mini lift kit no matter what it's getting a uh, brand new overboard uh, 4ZE1 pace setter header. Uh, we're giving it all the juice, that one. I've got an Aussie locker for that if it doesn't get purchased. And uh, now I have a limited slip diff because that one, although it acts like a limited slip, I don't believe it is. It's just a straight 12 volt corporate. <clears throat> and you know what? When you look at it, there's really not a lot from the back to tell that this is any bit of a different diff than the other ones. Uh, it just looks like a standard 12 bolt corporate. So, we've got ourselves a good score. And um, if we uh, take a look at the 4FB1 over here in the transmission, I am working just to resolve uh, what kind of a transmission this is. So to you, the viewer, I would put out a request. If you have any information about this transmission, I would like you to uh, please email me, itm4x4 at gmail.com. Now, we can see down here, I don't know how much you can see it with this camera, but there is a pretty deep army green, which I don't expect is stock. I believe this transmission was serviced. I believed it. I believe it was painted. I believe that somebody has jimmied a pretty strange little plug here in the drain hole. Um, and by strange, I mean this is absolutely not factory. This is hand fabbed. It's not even perfectly round. I can see a, um, a torch uh, slag cut here on the bottom. It must have been some kind of a threaded plug because they have fixed it in there and it doesn't appear to leak. And, uh, of course, the other strange bit is the transfer case. That's absolutely not what I'm used to seeing. Let's take a look at what I'm used to seeing because I have a very healthy assortment of transmissions right here. Actually, it's not really an assortment at all. These are all uh, M75, which is the actual option code you will see on your option code plate. When you see M75 on your option code plate, that is an MSG. The MSG-5 is normally paired with the four-cylinder, uh, 4ZE-1. However, I currently drive Goldie, and Goldie has an MUA-5 paired up to a 4ZE-1. It was like that from the factory. Goldie came from California, and the difference between that MUA-5 that fits onto the 4ZE-1 and the MUA-5 that fits onto the 2.8-liter GMV-6 is that the bell housing for the starter is on the opposite side. So on the V6, the, the bell housing and starter hole uh, are on the left-hand side, on the driver's side, and on a regular four-cylinder with the MSG, 
you can see it's actually on the passenger side. So this is the way it would sit in the truck. You'd have your driver off to the left. Here's your passenger side. Here's your fork where your slave is going to be. And uh, there's your starter bell housing. So if we take a quick look at this transfer case, we can see that it is nothing like this tiny little thing that is set up right here. The other thing that we can see is that this is cast iron. I'll bet this is a tough little bitch. I really bet, I'll bet this is very simple and it's very, very, very tough. How do you like my uh, fluid catcher? We were uh, getting some, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, he warned me before we loaded it that it was going to piss tranny oil out the back. And he said it was not engine oil, which is exactly what the MSG takes. And so I just threw, uh, threw the old glad hand on there and it has filled up with fluid. So now it's acting like a little bit of a water balloon. Uh, I've got my bin down there to catch any drips, but it's pretty funny. And so, yeah, let's have a better look at this transmission body, right? Noting these lines, noting the cooling fins, noting our plug. And let's go and have a look at the MSG right here. Does that look what we just, that doesn't look anything like what we just saw, it, does it? Right? And so, here's our starter housing. Here's our starter housing. Take another look. And take another look. Okay, so again on the cooling fins. You see how the cooling fins are designed? Take a look at how many squares we have here. One and two before we get to the large flare. One, two, three to the large flare. This is not an MSG. Well, I shouldn't say that. This could be an MSG. It is not an M75 that is normally paired with a 4Z1. I believe it's smaller. And in fact, I don't even know if it's a 5-speed. It indeed could be a 4. We had a little bit of damage when, um, when this was put into the truck. It's kind of my fault. I jammed the hood down on top of it. But anyways, with that little bit of damage, I am... Yeah, it's a 5. It's a 5. I'm, I'm getting 6 positions there. So we got 5 plus reverse. And the 4FB1. We can talk about the 4FB1. We can talk about the C223, C222, <laughs> and the C221. All in the same family. And a pretty amazing reputation these engines have. Why do they have such an amazing reputation? Well, apparently, you can hook them up to a Seacan reefer unit, a Thermo King, and they work forever. 20 to 30,000 hours in between rebuilds. These were put into millions of Thermo Kings, the 2.2s. As far as I know, again, I could stand to be corrected. Um, this cover, when we get it off, is hiding an assembly of gears in the back. There's no, do you see a timing belt? Do you see a timing belt? Do you see a timing belt? No. Do we have a timing chain? I don't believe we do. We're gear driven. And from whatever I've heard, from whatever manufacturer, every time I hear somebody talk about a diesel that is gear driven and doesn't have a timing belt, I hear superstar comments like the thing would never die never changed its timing it always kept going stuff like that so without a chain to go bad without a belt to snap those timing gears will stay engaged and do their job for hella 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 long time and to put that in perspective for you from the reputation 20 to 30,000 hours in between rebuilds if we go our maximum at 30,000 hours we do a full rebuild on this engine today. We spend two to three thousand dollars plus some of our own labor to do a full rebuild on it. 
we fire it up to a, a you know couple it to a gen set and fire it up and then we come back in three years and three months and at that time it will be ready for another rebuild so this thing will run 24 7 365 days a year for 3.3 years before it needs a rebuild now if you break that down into increments of when you start and operate your truck and turn it off and then discount the, the downtime well how long is it gonna go it's gonna go a lot longer than anybody really expected this is a marvelous little engine so I'm looking forward to the day that we get it uh, prepared for a cold start right now I'm not able to do that I'm not even able to prepare for it because the mechanic I purchased it from for some reason I didn't want to get into it with him he's he's going through a tough time in life right now um, for some reason he removed this float bowl from the bottom of the diesel Kiki fuel pump I'm not happy about that I don't know why he would disassemble the fuel pump when this engine came to him for a head gasket and it then fell off the tow hook and went all the way down his driveway and had a front end collision with another vehicle. That's why it got turned into a parts truck because he figured the body and the truck were screwed and that nobody would want them. So he pulled out the cutting torch and literally blasted this frame in half. Decided to keep the diesel engine. So why he removed the starter, I don't know. I do have that inside. He was able to find that. Where that lower float bowl came off of, you know, I don't know why he pulled that off. In fact, I, I don't know why he did anything to the side of this engine. He should have been concentrating on disassembling the top and getting at that head gasket. In fact, he never offered me a head gasket, so I don't even know if he had ordered that. Anyways, this is our 4FB1 project, and we're looking forward to knocking this off as soon as possible. Um, just to, There's going to be a big delay in between the time that I get to it. And the whole plan for this transfer case, transmission, and engine is that we're going to take Old Blue back there, which has an absolutely spectacular frame and body. I mean, I would rate first rate. It, it had new paint on it um, on the front end. It all got a new paint job. We're going to uh, remove the GM V6, and we're going to put this motor under that hood and do a diesel conversion. Now, the, the other thing, the last thing that I'm going to mention is that there was another surprise involving this mystery truck and uh, it's going to be kind of one of the last surprises that I get to in this video um, there is a brain in here that I don't recognize okay I've seen the fed standards uh, fed standards pretty much have been in every almost every truck that I pick up um, now we get under here and we see this thing and it's definitely not a fed standard it's not a california standard it looks like a v6 brain let's have a look at old blue old blue had the gm v6 so yeah just to have a look here you can see this is the front end on old blue old blue is looking beautiful right even got the pinstriping not that i would pink uh, i would not pink any of my troopers but those are just spots the rest of it is a light blue so i'm going to stick with the the color that is on the diesel engine now and i'm going to refurbish that oh look at that i'm locked out on this side um because the blue t you know to to open the the navy hood the navy blue hood on this truck and see that there's a baby blue engine underneath ah it's color coordinated i like that shit all right got a bunch of junk stored in here we'll just take a look in the console and look at that that's a v6 brain so I mean I do see them I do own them but I don't see them as much as I see the four cylinder brains the fed standards um, yeah and if anybody needs a California brain please give me a call because I don't think I'm ever gonna use it don't want to throw it in the scrap pile so we had a v6 under the hood of this white LS which means that the transmission that went with that V6 was very much almost guaranteed to be an MUA 5-speed where that transmission is who knows it's with the guy who converted it which is a shame because it's a damn good transmission but anyways that's it for the mystery machine for today we're gonna discover more I'm sure 
and uh, we'll get back to you with an update video. Um, but I have just picked up a, another job as a heavy duty mechanic for a big construction company on Vancouver Island. So I'm not going to be able to do uh, as many videos. I'll, I'll work on it, but there's there, right now there's like at least 20 videos that I want to shoot. Um, we're going to have to get to uh, doing a headset on this thing. And when I mean headset, like wait till I show you the gasket kit. You're going to flip your lid. It's got like 90 pieces. I know, you're expecting a head gasket kit for a V6. Maybe there's uh, three, four pieces in it. Uh-uh. 90 pieces for a full top end rebuild. You got the 3.2 V6 dual overhead cam, 32 valves. It's going to be a pretty complex rebuild. But this is, in my opinion, the only V6 to have. Okay, the 3.5s were known to be problematic, like huge problematic. Um, the 2.8 only 10 horsepower more than the 4ZE1, which I can easily make up with uh, just doing a few aftermarket mods, right? I mean, a 4-in-1 header for starters, high flow exhaust. Um, so uh, that's going to be a pretty interesting rebuild, and we will get into it. Um, but just before I go, I want to recommend a video to you guys because I have found a real good one on YouTube, okay? This is this video is called what's going on behind your stock diff cover and i believe this is put together by banks power um, specifically because the gentleman doing the tutorial is wearing a banks power t-shirt and if we just look who uh, who posted this video it is banks power for sure so this is actually Gail Banks from Banks Power doing this tutorial and he has built a see-through diff cover on the back of a differential and he proceeds to do an absolutely beautiful tutorial on what's going on inside the differential. This is done by an absolute master. This is not a video that I would say is being put together by a professional YouTuber who doesn't actually work as a mechanic and I'm fully prepared to endorse this video. I think it's a really great way to understand differentials. If you want more education on uh, differentials or limited slip, you can have a look at a very old educational video that I have on my list, and um, it's about understanding differentials. So anyways, uh, that's about it. Thank you very much for joining us at the ITM 4x4 shop. And uh, also just to let you know, uh, I've started up a new page on Instagram. So look up Island Trooper on Instagram and have a look for that old school Azuzu logo. All right, troopers? Keep the rubber side down.